The title of the class is Parashiyot Tazriya Mitzorah, I Am Superman. And I'd like to discuss the double parasha that we had this week, which is unique because it doesn't happen often, but common in that it happens often enough that we recognize it. And it's really the product of a math problem. There are 54 parashiyot in the Torah, and there are 52 weeks in the year. So by definition, there has to be a minimum of two weeks where we're going to read a double parasha on an average year. And usually in most years, there are holidays that fall out on Shabbat, in which case we read the, holiday, the parasha that's associated with the holiday and not the parasha of the week, creating even more weeks on which we need to read parashiyot as a double parasha. And a third reason why we may have parash- a double parasha is because when the calendar was set up, it was set up in such a way that there are certain milestones that we want to reach at certain points in the year. So, for example, we always want to read Parashat B'midbad before Shavuot. So we got to get there in time for Shavuot. And so there may be double parashot leading up to that so we can get to where we need to be in time because the Torah portion is associated with what's coming up during the year. So this week we have a double parasha, Parashat Tazriya Mitzora. But it's a unique double parasha because it seems to be that they are diametrically opposed. Tazriya talks about one thing, and Mitzora talks about the completely opposite thing. Now, before we talk about that, I want to just take a little bit of a detour and remind those who heard my class a few weeks ago on Parashat Vayikra, Sefer Vayikra to the Naked Eye is a book about Korbanot. But anybody who approaches Sefer Vayikra as a book about an ancient ritual that was practiced in an ancient building at an ancient time has completely lost focus of the book. Sefer Vayikra is about human emotions, raw human emotions, and Korbanot are an expression of those human emotions. I'm going to venture to say that last week's parasha, Parashat Shemini, which talked about the deaths of Aharon's sons, obviously a raw emotional experience, and this week's parasha, Tazriya Mitzora, probably highlight that idea of Sefer Vayikra being about human emotions. We'll revisit that at the end after I make my point. Parasha Tazriya Mitzora diametrically opposed. Parasha Tazriya is about life. I'm gonna pull up the sources. Those of you who have learned with me before know that I like to use sources in the class. Give me one second. Okay. All right, Jack Dweck, can you see the sources? Ralph Miz, you see the sources? Thumbs up? Yes? Okay, great. Okay. Parashat Tazriya opens. God tells Moshe, to tell the Jewish people the following. A woman conceives, she has a baby boy. She was, is Tameh. For seven days after having this child, she bleeds. She's in a state of Tumah. On the eighth day, she circumcises, he circumcises the, the evid of this baby boy. On the eighth day, the child gets a circumcision. Parashat Tazriya is about life. It's about bringing life into the world. And in fact, if you continue to read the parasha. It talks about the ramifications of what it is to bring life into the world, particularly discussing the human component about bringing a life into the world, even more specifically about the bodily functions involved in having a child. It goes on to talk about when a woman has a cycle, when a woman bleeds, when a woman has a baby, there's a certain level of tumah. It talks about if a man has an emission and the bodily functions that he has all of which, again, go into producing a child. Parashat Tazriya is about creating and bringing human life into the world. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Parashat Mitzorah opens in source number two. God tells Moshe, 
זאת תורה, זאת תהיה תורת המצורע ביום טהורתו והובא אל הכהן. This should be the law of the leper on the day that he wants to become to. pure. He comes to the Kohen and he goes through his process of becoming tahor. The mitzorah is considered someone who is dead. Source number three, the Gemara, Masech and Nitarim, Vitanya, says in Abiraita, Arba, Arba'a Hashubin Kemet. There are four people who, even though they're alive, are considered dead. Ani umitzora v'some umish en lo banim. One of those four is a leper, so he may be alive, but in a very real way, he is dead. Why? Because the mitzora is ostracized. He's taboo. He's taken out of the community. He's shunned. And being as we are social creatures, when you are completely excommunicated and ostracized from the people around you, there's a certain piece of life that's missing. And I hate to say it, but I think in, in some way, shape, or form, we're, we're all kind of experiencing it right now. We're, we're all in our own homes. We're taken out of society. We're taken out of social interactions. And there's a, a very real piece of life that is missing. And in that realm, the Gemara says, a mitzorah is considered like someone who is dead. Tazriah is about life. Mitzorah is about, at the very least, philosophical social death. Yet, they come together to create a double parasha, and in it, they create a beautiful symphony. Because the two of them, while seemingly diametrically opposed, actually tell one and the same story. And so for that, I read source number four. Source number four is a famous story that's brought down in the Midrash Tan Chuma. About Rabbi Akiva, I'll read it together with you and then we can discuss. Or I'll talk. Maase, Shesha'al Ternus Rufus Harasha at Rabbi Akiva. There's a story that is told that Ternus Rufus, who was a uh, Roman general, a Roman leader, asked Rabbi Akiva a question. Ezo Maasim Naim. Which acts are better? Shal Kadosh Baruchu or Shel Basar Vadam? The acts of men or the acts of God? Amar lo, Rabbi Akiva answers back and he says, Shabbasar v'adam na'i, man's actions are more powerful, are better than God's actions. Amar lo, Ternus Rufus, Ternus Rufus turns and he says, Hare ha-shamayim v'ha'aretz yachol adam la'asod k'ayoseh. What are we talking about? God made the world, the heavens and the earth and all of the things that are in it. You're going to tell me man and his actions are more beautiful and more powerful than, than God's actions? Amar lo, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva responds and he says, Okay, let, let's not compare apples and oranges. I got it. God created the heaven and the earth. Man can't do that. But let's talk about where we can make a comparison. Let's talk about the things that man can do. Amarlo. Ternus Rufus says to him, Lama aten mulin. So then I have a question. Why? Does man need to get a circumcision? Why didn't God create him circumcised? Amarlo, Rabbi Akiva responds and says, I knew you were going to ask me that question. That's exactly why I told you that man's actions are better than God's. At which point did Rabbi Akiva brought to Ternus Rufus uh, dough and baked rolls. Uh, oh, sorry, wheat and baked rolls. Amarloni says, Elu kadosh Elu de adam. This wheat, that's the act of God. The rolls that you can eat, enjoy on Shabbat meal, that's the, the work of man. How much more beautiful is it than God's actions? Amarlo and Elu naim otenu shibulim. Ternus Rufus says, you lost track of my question. Tell me why man was created not circumcised. I could ask the same question, why there's an umbilical cord. Let God create babies without an umbilical cord. And in terms of what you asked me, why is a, ch a child not born circumcised? The reason that man was created not circumcised 
is because God wants man to partner with him in perfecting the human body. And in that regard, says Rabbi Akiva, man is on par with God. God begins the work and man finishes it. God gives us wheat and we make dough. God gives us a child and we perfect that child. Man and his actions are greater than God and his actions in that God gives us the raw materials and man turns them into perfection or at least has the opportunity to turn them into perfection. And in that regard, man is a creator just as God is. As the Gemara in Masech Nida in source number five says, Tanu Rabbanan, Shelosha Shutafin Yesh Be'adam. There are three partners in creating man. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, V'avi V'imo. God, the dad, and the mom. Man is a creator. And man should not take that lightly. That is an incredibly powerful idea. Think about it for a moment. Man has the ability to create another human being. It's a mind-blowing concept that we as people, in, or two people, in their manifestation of their love for each other, can get together and they can create another human being, a thinking, feeling, speaking, intellectual human being who then has the ability to perpetuate and bring more people into the world. It's a mind-blowing concept that we as human beings have the ability to create the most intricate being on earth. And in that, we are supermen. We are supermen. You are a creator. And in fact, embedded in the very creation story, God allowed for that. God sanctified the seventh day. Because on that day he rested. That God created to do. Rav Shemshon Rafael Hirsch notices a problem with the Pasuk. The word La'asot is hanging. The Pasuk should have ended after Kibo Shabbat Mikom Malachto, Asher Bara Elohim. He rested from all of the work that he, God, created. What does La'asot mean? The word is hanging. And so he writes, God called the whole material and spiritual world into being so that there can be nothing in this whole world that stands hinderingly in the way of this man's free-willed spiritual and moral goal of mankind. The word la'asot, says Rav Shemshon for El Hirsch, belongs to the other creator. God created the world so that la'asot, it can be finished, it can be continued to be made and created and produced by people. In creation, God made for himself room for a partner. And we are those partners. I and you, I am Superman. I am a creator. And in Parashat Tazriya, we talk about what that means. You can bring a child into the world. That is not something to scoff at. That is the highest level of creation that can possibly be. And in that, you then perfect the world. In the words of Rabbi Akiva, our actions have the potential to be greater than the actions of Borei Olam and that we are finishing what Borei Olam started. Parashat Tazria says, I am Superman, I am a creator. I have the ability to be a partner with God in continuing to create the world. But there's a problem. The problem is that that can then lead to one of the greatest ills of man. The Gemara Masechet Erachin on Dav Tetzayin writes the following: Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Al Shiva Devarim Nigaim Ba'in. There are three reasons why someone might become a leper, which is the theme of the second parasha. Al Lashon Hara, he speaks Lashon Hara. Val Shifichut Amim, he commits murder. Val Shivu Atshav, or he abuses speech. He lies. He does not follow through on what he said. 
Val Gilui Arayot, on sexual promiscuity, Val Gesu Taruach, on pride, on haughtiness, Val Hagezel, and on theft, Val Tzarot Ha'ayin, and on being stingy. Leave the last one aside because it's a diff different conversation. The first six, at least, and really the seventh, but it's a different conversation, all have a common denominator. What is the common denominator for all seven of those things that result in mitzorah and leprosy? It's an abuse of power. It's an abuse of my humanity. Hence, you go wrong after reading Parashat Tazriya, where God said, you are Superman, you are a creator, you are my partner. You think that therefore you are greater than you really are and you abuse power. Parashat Mitzorah is the response. Someone who speaks Lashon Hara is taking advantage of, he is abusing his ability to speak, which is unique to men. Ruach Memalala says Targum Unklus in the beginning of Sefer Bereshit. What differentiates man from beast? We have the ability to speak. That is an incredible power. You abuse it. You speak badly about somebody else. You're a mitzora. Al shivichut damim. You murder somebody. You take advantage of your superiority, whether it be in strength or in in uh, my finances, whatever it may be. That's an abuse of power. Al shivuachav. You lied again, abusing your ability to speak. That's an abuse of power. Giloy arayot, taking advantage of somebody else because you're bigger or stronger. That's an abuse of your humanity. Al gesu tarawach, you're proud, you're haughty, you think you're all that. That's an abuse of what I've given you. Al gezel and al same thing. All of those result in mitzora, in leprosy. The person experiences a philosophical death. You were put into society as a human being to help move society forward with the creative abilities that I gave you. You abuse that, you have to be removed from society. Your power to be human, to interact, is stopped. You need to leave. And you need to think about the fact that you have abused the power that I gave you. Mitzorah is a response to Tazria. Yes, you are a creator. Yes, you are a partner with God. Yes, you are incredibly powerful. If you abuse it, you bring a certain type of death of your own humanity to yourself, and you need a timeout. And you need to step away from the community because you're abusing the power that I gave you to be a creator. Which Borei Olam tells us in Sefer Devarim, you're going to come to Eretz Israel and you're going to make money and you're going to inhabit the land and things are going to start moving smoothly and they're going to go well. And what are you going to say? Look at me. I'm the man. I'm the best. I am on top of the world. And you're going to forget about God. And you're going to forget about the fact that the superpowers that he gave you were given to you to move society forward, not to take advantage of it. Tazriya Mitzora lie at the center of Sefer Vayikra, a book about human emotions. There is no greater human emotion that we struggle with than our own humanity and the push and pull of what that means to be a human being. Because on the one hand, we're the greatest creature on earth. We can create more people. On the other hand, we're a speck in the universe. And the tension of managing where I stand as I consider both sides of that spectrum tears at my heartstrings. Who am I? Where do I stand? What do I do with this power? And how do I move society forward without getting in my own way? And we've seen the abuse of power throughout Tanakh. In fact, sometimes it plagued even the greatest people. Source number 10, a Gemara Masechet Sanhedrin. V'amar Rabbi Yitzchak, says Rabbi Yitzchak, mipnei ma lo nitgalu ta'amei Torah. Why didn't God reveal to us the reasons for the mitzvot? Tell me why I can't do this. Tell me why I should do that. Some of them are obvious, some of them are not. Why didn't you just tell me why? So I can intellectualize it and understand it. Answers Rabbi Yitzchak. 
Nishal Bahen Gadol Ha'olam, because there are two mitzvot in the Torah that I can point to where the reasons were given for them, and because the reason was given, man faltered. Ktiv, it says in the Pasuk and Sefer Devarim, Lo Yarbe Lo Nashim, a king is not allowed to have multiple wives because they may lead him astray. Amar Shilamo, Shilamo HaMelech, why is this man that ever lived said, Ani Arbe Lo Asur, I, I'm above that. I'll have as many wives as I want, and I won't turn away. I'm above the logic. And he failed. The end of his life, his wives led him to Abu Dazara. And it also says in Sefer Tevarim, a king cannot have many horses, because Mitzrayim was the country that was producing these horses and Borei Olam doesn't want us to return to Mitzrayim. Ve'amar shilamo, ani arbev lo ashiv. Don't worry about it. I'll have a lot of horses and I won't go back to Mitzrayim. I'm above the logic. Uchtiv atezeh merkava v'misrayim v'shesh me'ot. And nonetheless it says that shilamo ha'melech went back to Mitzrayim to get horses. Sometimes man can't get out of his own way because the power that he has gets to his head. And the fact that he is a creator, he thinks that he can be above the ills and the logic and the rationalizations of society, and he can fend for himself above and beyond what the Torah has told us. But we see even the greatest people failed because they took power to the limit. Parashat Tazriya tells me, I am Superman. You are a creator on par with Bore Olam. He's counting on you to be a partner. But if you abuse it, parashat mitzorah, then you need to be excommunicated because you've abused the power that Bore Olam gave you. There's a famous saying of one of the Hasidic rabbis of Poland from the 1500s. He says, and he bases it on a Gemara, Everyone must have two pockets with a node in each pocket so that he or she can reach into one or the other depending on the need. When feeling lowly and depressed, discouraged and disconsolate, one should reach into the right pocket and there find the words, Bishvili nivra ha'olam, the world was created for me, you are Superman. But when feeling high and mighty, kochi ve'otzim adi, one should reach into the left pocket and find the words, ve'anochi afar ve'efer, I am dust and ashes. Because sometimes I can't get out of my own way. And in reality, I'm a nothing. I'm a speck in the universe. Tazriya Mitzvah straddles that line. You are a creator, but you also sometimes get in your own way of being a creator. You take advantage of the power and you bring upon yourself your own social and philosophical death. And that takes us all the way back to the beginning of the parasha which opens with the mitzvah of Brit Milah. Brit Milah done on the eighth day. Why eight days? And that's a question that has been answered by many, and there is a myriad of answers offered to that question, one of them by the Mabit, a more philosophical approach, and he writes, Tachlit ha'adam eno musag ela ayyide torach ve'amal ha'adam b'torah v'ma'asim tovim. Man's goal is to struggle and to toil in Torah and mitzvot. Ki hakol bideh shamayim chutz mirat shamayim. Everything is determined by shamayim except yirat shamayim, meaning man has free choice. V'zohi hora'at ha'milah b'yom ha'shemini l'ledato, and that is what is symbolized by the fact that b'yom ha'milah is on the eighth day. L'omar shelo nivra ha'adam li'itnaheg al teva ha'olam keba'ale chayim. Ela litroach lepo'al pe'ulotah mechubanot liyotzro, u'lahaklish b'yado davar ha'mevi'o lideh avera v'hi ha'orulah. In Judaism, the number eight <coughs> represents rising above nature. Seven represents <coughs> the ultimate capacity you could reach in nature. Shabbat is on the seventh day. It's the ultimate level one can reach in the physical universe. Eight is above the teva, is above nature. Hence, Brit Milah is on the eighth day symbolizing the fact that man struggles with and is tasked with rising above his own nature. 
and there is no greater symbol of man's desire than the place where the Brit Milah is done, and that he will struggle with his whole life. The symbol of his creatorship. He can be a creator. He can bring people into the world. You need to rise above. You are all powerful. Obviously not. You are powerful. But in that, you are also very susceptible and very vulnerable to your own power. And that in and of itself tells the story of man. In Parashat Tazriya Mitzorah. It is a double parasha that always sits as a double parasha, which to the naked eye seems to be two parashiot that are diametrically opposed, pinned together for no other reason than the fact that we need to save time, and that is not true. They are pinned together because they tell the story of who we are as human beings. And on that note, I add one last piece. It's interesting to note, and important to note, that one of the themes permeating Tazriya Mitzvah is that of Tum'ah, of a person becoming impure and as such is either taken out of society or is not allowed to have interactions with people to some degree or another. Look at the things that make a person Tameh. A woman has a baby, or a woman has a cycle, or a man has an emission, or somebody comes into direct contact with a dead body. There is a common denominator between all of those things. They are or should be life-altering moments. You come into contact with a dead body. You just come face-to-face with mortality, with the fact that the human body doesn't last forever. And you need to take pause when that happens. If you come into contact with a dead body and you don't at least for a moment think about your own mortality and the fact that time is a commodity, something is very wrong. Which, by the way, translates into halakha. Why do we wash our hands after a funeral and then not dry them? Why do we not dry our hands? It's February. It's freezing. Why do we not dry our hands? Because the rabbis wanted you to take that funeral with you, if only for a few minutes, till you got to the corner at the end of the block and your hands are freezing. Why are they freezing? Because I was just in a funeral, sitting face to face with a dead body that was six feet away from me. That should affect me. You become Tameh. Tameh equals time out. Tameh, time out. You just came into contact with a dead body. You need a time out to reflect and to think about the fact that you are a mortal human being. A woman just had a baby, or had a cycle, or a man had an emission. Those are all things that say that you can either did or have the ability to bring a human being into the world. That is monumental. It's monumental. And you need to stop. And you need to pause. And so for the next seven days, or three days, or whatever it may be, depending on the situation, you're going to take a time out. And you're not going to have your normal interactions. And you're going to think about the fact that you, as a human being, have the ability to create more human beings. And if that is not something that blows your mind, I don't know what is. You need a timeout. And therefore, you are Tameh. It's not about pure or impure or off limits or on limits. It's about built-in reflection time for the milestones of life that remind me about my own power as a human being and my own vulnerabilities, my own mortality as a human being. And that is Tasudeya Mitzorah. I am Superman, and I am a little tiny guy that really adds up to nothing at the end of the day as well. And I think if we can read the parasha and really all of Sefer Vayikra through those lenses, we will learn not only a lot about Sefer Vayikra that we didn't know or anticipate was in there, because we look at it as a book of Korbanot, but even more so, a lot about who we are as human beings as we navigate the world and try to make, try to make up and down of what that means. Thank you for joining. I hope that you enjoyed. Shabbat shalom. Stay safe and healthy.